The story of the birth of Jesus is one of the most widely shared historical accounts of all time. Christmas reminds us of the Savior who came to the world to save humanity. May we not be distracted by the daily tasks of gifts and trees, presents and lights, but remember that really, it's all about the baby. We encourage you to watch the production as a family and reflect on the true reason for the season. May your heart be filled with joy and wonder in awe of a newborn king. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you.
Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there and registered with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests.
Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Good morning, Homewood Christian School.
parents and students that are tuning in to this Christmas program. Uh, what a blessing it is for us to be able to uh, have the program, even though it's virtual. It's still a blessing to be able to watch our children sing songs and to celebrate the birth of our Savior. I just want to thank Natalie and Jimmy for asking me to come just to share a brief few words about the heart of Christmas, about why we're here about what, and about what we're celebrating. So I just want to start off by saying that we all understand that 2020 has been a very difficult year. 2020 is still not even done yet. We don't know what the future holds over the next few weeks and into next year, but needless to say, it has been challenging this year. And and my prayer has been for our church and for our school that even in the midst of all of these difficult challenges that, that we've been facing, my prayer is that as we are entering this Christmas season, as we're thinking about the birth of Christ, my prayer is, is that we would use these moments and these times to remember what matters most, that we would use these moments and these times to evaluate our life and to think deeply about what matters most. And there really is nothing like Christmas season to do that for us, to stop and to ponder and to evaluate. But during this time, it's not often easy to understand the clear message of Christmas because there's so many things that cloud out that message. There's so many things in our world that, that point away from the light of Christ during Christmas. And there's, so there's really two things that I want to point to here this morning that I think help us focus on what Christmas is all about. In Luke chapter 2, which is one of the four Gospels, it talks about the birth of Christ. And in Luke chapter 2, the message to the shepherds when Christ is born, the angels speak to the shepherds and, and they say this, For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior. A Savior. And that's the first thing I really want to talk about here this morning, just to kind of wrap up this, this program, is that Christ came to be a Savior. That is the point of Christmas. The point of Christmas is not a fat man in a red suit. The point of Christmas is not a fat man in a red suit who only gives good gifts to those who are good and bad gifts and coal to those who are bad. The good news of the gospel of Christmas, the message of Christmas, is that Jesus was born to be a savior for those who are bad, to those who are not good, which is all of us. Romans chapter 3 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that that means me and you and all of us. We all need a savior. We have all fallen short of God's glory and his standard of righteousness. So the message of Christmas is a message that is good news for all of us, all of us that are sinners, all of us who are sinners, that unto us was born a Savior. And that Savior came to die on the cross for our sins, to take our place on the cross so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be cleansed, so that one day, because of our faith in Christ, we can spend eternity in heaven with God. So that is the first thought I wanted to mention and talk about this morning, that, that the message of Christmas is not, is not about all the gifts that we give and the, gifts that we, and the gifts that we receive. The message of Christmas is about a Savior that was born over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, about a baby that was born to be a Savior, to ultimately die on the cross for the sins of humanity. The second thing that I want to mention is that that Savior that was born to die, that he gives a call to all that would hear. He gives a call to all that would listen, to all that would have ears to hear. He gives a call and says, would you come to me? Would you come to me? Jesus says, would you come to me that you would have life? And he says this in Matthew chapter 11. I, I want to read Matthew 11. This is the words of the Savior born in Bethlehem. This is the words of a Savior born in a manger over 2,000 years ago. This is the words of our Savior. Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You need rest for your souls today? You feel heavy? You feel burdened down? 
with the weight of this world, the weight of the, the, the life circumstances we're all facing today? Do you feel the pressure, the weight of your sin, the weight of the, 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 the poor choices maybe you've made, the consequences that you're experiencing? Do you, do you need to have rest today? The message of the gospel is that Jesus came to be a savior, to take the weight of our sins and our bad decisions and our mistakes and to, and to forgive us and to lift that weight off of our shoulders. But he also came in this life so that we can have peace. That is the message of the gospel. And I want to encourage you to heed the words of a savior born in Bethlehem, to heed the words of Christ in Matthew chapter 11. Come to him, all you who are weary, and are heavy laden, are burdened down with weights, that today, today, you can be born again. Today, you can receive the gift of Christmas, which is God, which is Emmanuel, God with us. So I just want to close in prayer. And if that's you here today and you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've never done what Romans 10 says that you would believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is God and he was raised from the dead and you will be saved, born again. If you've never made that confession, you can do it even right now. So I'm going to close in prayer and my prayer will be that if that is you, that you would respond in faith to Christ, respond in faith to a savior that came to redeem us, to set us free. Father, I thank you for this Christmas program, and Lord, I, I thank you for the privilege of gathering together to watch our children and to, to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And Lord, I pray that those that may be watching that are, are heavy laden and burdened down with, with sins or burdened down with, with anxieties and worries and stresses of the day, I pray, Lord, that we would all turn to Christ, that we would come to him, that we would not run from him, but that we would come to him. And God, I pray that those who don't know you have not placed their faith in you for salvation. I pray that today that they would confess Christ, that they would repent of their sins and turn to Christ and that they would be forgiven, that they would, would receive the greatest gift of Christmas on Christmas, that they would receive Christ as their Savior. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh,